worship experience here at the Mount. Thank you for allowing us to turn your living room into life room. Let's go to worship. Good morning, Mount Moriah. Come on right here and give God a glorious praise because he's worthy of the honor and glory. And we came to bless him and we came to honor him. We're going to go to God for a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for this morning, God. Thank you for allowing us to be here, God. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for giving us the activity of our limbs, God. God, we just came to say thank you on this morning. Thank you for life, health, and strength, God. Thank you for giving us breath in our body. Thank you for giving us eyes to see and ears to hear, God. Thank you for a sound mind, God. God, we just came to tell you thank you this morning. Thank you for continuing to bless us, God. Thank you for keeping us, God. Thank you for keeping us in our right mind, God. God, we give you glory, God. God, we give you honor. God, we bless your name. There's nobody like you, God, and we say thank you, God. Thank you for continuing to make ways out of no way, God. Thank you for continuing to open doors that no man can close, God. God, we just simply came this morning just to tell you thank you. Thank you for continuing to do just what you do in our lives, God. God, thank you for another chance, God. Thank you for another chance to get it right, God. God, we just came to say thank you. Thank you for you being God. Thank you for you being God, even in a time like this, through a pandemic, God. We just say thank you. Thank you for keeping us, God. Thank you for healing our bodies. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. God, we don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted to lift your name, God. We just want to continue to lift your name and continue to give you glory. It's in our son, in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Come on right there and give God glory all over this building and bless him. Hallelujah. Give him the fruit of your lips. Hallelujah, because he's worthy of it. Hallelujah. Now, come on, I need you to groove with us on this morning. Hallelujah. We have come, we have to come give you praise. To give you praise. Oh, of nations said we have come we have come in victory in victory filled with love filled with and love liberty. and liberty so hallelujah 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 to the king everybody hallelujah 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 to the king Said we have come, we have to come. give you praise, to give you praise. Holy one, holy one, of nation. We have come, we have come in victory, in victory. Filled with love, filled with love, and liberty. Say hallelujah, hallelujah, 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the King. Everybody, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah,
we thank you because you're wonderful. God, we thank you because you're amazing. God, we thank you because you're great. And God, we know that you are all of those things by experience. Because God, we've tried things in this world. We've tried our friends. We've tried our family. We've tried relationships, God. And all of that leads us back to you to say that you are still great. You are still mighty. You are never failing, God. And we thank you today. And we thank you because you are the King of glory. The Lord God strong and mighty. The Lord God mighty in battle. So God, today we thank you and we just want to lift up your name. In this moment of worship, we just want to tell you who you are. And we just want to crown you King of glory. We just want to crown you King of glory. God, we just want to worship you. Because your word declares that they that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. So God, we worship you honestly today. God, we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. So God, we come to you in this moment, God, humbly as we know. And we just want to crown you king of kings. We just want to tell you who you are. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, the world will bow down and say you are God. Every man will bow down and say you are king. So let's start right now. Why would we wait? So keep together yes the world yes the world will bow down bow down and say you are God every man every man will bow down bow down and say you are king so let's start right now so let's start
set up and we'll sing hallelujah. We'll sing hallelujah. Till you come, till you come again. And we'll dance in your presence. And we'll dance in your presence. Till you come, till you come again. Can we do it one more time together? So we'll sing hallelujah. We'll sing hallelujah. Till you come, till you come again. Because no man knows the hour, no man knows the day. So we'll dance in your presence. Dance in your presence. Till you come. Till you come again. So can we open up our mouths and lift our voices? We'll sing hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Till you come. Till you come again. And we'll dance in your presence. We'll dance in your presence. Till you come. Till you come again. So we'll sing hallelujah.
your hands in worship and can you just go with the father for a minute you said you wanted to be in his presence so right here in this moment can you tap into his presence because in his presence there is fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pledges forevermore so God in this moment we will worship in your presence God in this moment we will bow in your presence God in this moment we will surrender in your presence and God we don't want to do anything but to be in your presence we don't want to go anywhere else if it's not in your presence we don't want to walk anywhere else if it's not in your presence God we want to be where you are God we want to be where you are God we want to worship at your feet God we want to praise at your feet we want to be right there where you are we want to be where you are we want to be where Amen. Have you invited the King of Glory into your, your living room, into your home, into your heart? Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of Glory, amen, that's what it's all about, the King of Glory the King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Gracious God, we thank you for the blessings of life, the blessings of this day. We thank you for this preaching moment. We're cognizant of the fact that without you, we can do nothing. Oh, but with you, we can do all things. So I pray now, like the psalmist, that you would allow us to behold great wonders out of your law. I pray, like the Apostle Paul, that you would allow me to preach, not with enticing words of my own wisdom, but in a demonstration of your Holy Spirit and power, that I might make known the mysteries of your gospel. Oh, God, we, we ask that you would give us receptive hearts and minds that we might receive your word with gladness that we might not just be hearers of your word but that we would be doers also oh how we love you today we thank you we praise you and we ask all these blessings in the mighty matchless name of your darling son Jesus the Christ and all who love the Lord and agree with this prayer said amen, amen, and amen. If you have your copy of the Word of God, would you go with us to the Old Testament book of Isaiah? Isaiah chapter 40. And for the benefit of brevity and the sake of our subject, we want to look at verses 1 through 5 of Isaiah chapter 40. I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version of God's Holy Word. And if you're physically able where you are, would you stand in honor of the Word of God? It reads, Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the deserts a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. My brothers and sisters, for the next few moments, that's ours to share. 
I simply want to talk to you from this thought, this theme, the hope of Advent. And my brothers and sisters, this second half of the book of Isaiah starts with chapter 40. Some scholars and theologians suggest that Isaiah can be broken down into three books, which they call 1st Isaiah, 2nd Isaiah, and 3rd Isaiah. They talk about the different writing styles of the uh, various chapters and uh, allude to the, the fact that maybe there was a different author for the various chapters. But my brothers and sisters, uh, the truth of the matter is that the people in chapter 40 are in exile. Their hearts are heavy because of all they have endured. They're in exile. They've been exploited. They've been, they're exhausted. They, they, they are exacerbated by the feeling that God has forgotten them and forsaken them. Their hope is almost gone, and they are lamenting their plight. My brothers and sisters, I believe that we can emphasize, em, empathize in some ways with the children of Israel at the time of the text. We, we, we too know what it's like, my brothers and sisters, to have heavy hearts and, and if we're honest, to feel that our hope is almost gone. Because we too are exhausted from being exploited and exiled. Uh, we may not be in a geographical exile, uh, but we are still in an economic exile. We're still in a civil human rights exile and even a social exile because of COVID-19. And if we're honest, it's enough to make you want to throw your hands up and holler. Every day brings new challenges that make us wonder if things will ever get any better. We still have mass shootings and politicians who are more concerned about uh, owning guns rather than promoting policies and practices that promote peace. We still have people who go to bed hungry in the United States of America, the wealthiest nation uh, who wastes 40% of the food that is produced. Companies and corporations would rather uh, throw food away than give it to those in need. We have the largest diagnosis of HIV AIDS cases right here in the city of Atlanta. But we have barriers to access of health care, medication, and education that will help in the fight. In 2020, women are still paid less than their male counterparts uh, for the same jobs, even though they are more educated and in, 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 in some instances have more experience than their male counterparts. Families are still dysfunctional because of the selfish choices of individuals and institutions. I don't know how you feel about it, but it's discouraging to watch the news because recently uh, watching the news is like uh, waking up in an Orwellian nightmare. Treaties and alliances that stem centuries of bloodshed across the globe are being torn up. A man who takes pride in spreading lies, hatred, and fear across the globe, uh, who, who colludes with other nations for his own political and personal financial gain, who lost the election and is going around now falsely and erroneously accusing and uh, claiming election fraud. Yes, at this very moment in history, our democracy is under attack. We are still not our brother and sister's keeper. Chaos and confusion still abound. Friends may be few. Your health may be failing. Your bills are high and your money is low. Your boo is now a bugaboo. Financial aid didn't come through. Or in some instances, financial aid came due. Student loans are, are knocking on your door. Uh, the job didn't call you back. Black lives still don't matter. And anything else that you can name, my brothers and sisters, and even with all of that, we have to have a Habakkuk 3, 17, 18 spirit that though the fig tree does not bud and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stall, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. 
I will be joyful in my God and my Savior. Let me see if I can uh, make it plain for you. Even though my money is acting funny and, and even though uh, my, I may not have a honey even though the kids may be acting crazy even though you might have sickness in your body death may have invaded your family my brothers and sisters even though you are at your wits end yet will I rejoice in the Lord my God I will be joyful in God my Savior because there is still hope because of Advent Oh, my brothers and sisters, Advent is from the Latin, Adventus, and it means arrival or coming. And it's usually used to denote an important arrival. My brothers and sisters, there is no more important arrival than that of Jesus Christ. The first arrival is what we celebrate and commemorate during the Christmas season, the Advent season, his first Arrival. The second arrival or second coming we anticipate and celebrate when we take communion. Now, Paul wrote about it in 1 Corinthians when he said, In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with imperishable, and the mortal must put on immortal. And that speaks of an eschatological hope, uh, my brothers and sisters, that, that should influence our existential hope. Because if God so loved the world that he sent his son that we might have eternal life, my brothers and sisters, I can have confidence that he'll take care of me in my existential life here and now. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I need to know, is there anybody this morning who can testify that you've seen the lightning flash and, and you've heard the thunder roll and you felt sin breakers dashing, trying to conquer your soul, but, but you heard the voice of Jesus telling you to fight on because he promised never to leave you, never to leave you alone. My brothers and sisters, don't lose hope. When we choose hope, we define what matters to us most. After all, hope is what powered the first African-American man to be elected president of these United States. It was hope that inspired 195 countries to sign the world's first accord on climate change. My brothers and sisters, and hope is how extreme poverty has fallen for the first time below 10% of the world's population. Oh, my brothers and sisters, don't lose hope. As a matter of fact, we've got every reason to be hopeful because of the Christmas season, because of Advent. And my brothers and sisters, there are some things that this text is tailored to teach you and I about the hope of Advent. The first thing that the text teaches us about the hope of Advent is the hope of forgiveness. Look at the text. The text says in verses 1 and 2, comfort, comfort my, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. My brothers and sisters, the prophet records that God's instructions were to comfort his people. He uses the personal pronoun, my people. God identifies with the children of Israel. My brothers and sisters, this should have been music to the people's ears because it signified that in spite of what they were experiencing, it signified that in spite of what they were feeling, they felt like God had forgotten them and forsaken them. But these words, this personal pronoun, my people, God says, my people, God had not forsaken them. He says, my people. People And my brothers and sisters, I don't know how you feel about it, but I can understand how they must have felt because uh, I, I, I know that there have been times in my own life when the cruel consequences of my own actions made me think and feel that God was through with me because I couldn't feel God and I couldn't find God. It's like the hymn writer said, I cannot live in sin and feel 
a Savior's love. Your blood can make my spirit clean and right my name above. And my brothers and sisters, if we are like the children of Israel, have lived in sin, have been participating in things that we know we shouldn't have and experienced those consequences, we can understand how it feels when we feel like God doesn't want a fool with us because we, uh, like the children of Israel, are chasing after uh, things that we had no business chasing after. But the good news is that even though we have chased after things that we had no business chasing after and mistreating one another and doing things that we had no business doing. The good news is that God still identifies with us. He still calls us his people. He says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and, and, and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven and heal the land. I'm so glad that he still identifies with us even after we've messed up. My brothers and sisters, I'm so glad that God doesn't kick us to the curb like we do. When we were crooked and crazy, God didn't throw us away, even though we've thrown others away for less. God didn't throw us away. And if you can admit that you didn't deserve God's grace and mercy, but you are glad that you received it, then you ought to be able to give God praise right there. Uh, that's all. Uh, after all you've done, he still calls you his child. He, he still calls us his people. He says, comfort them, not curse them. He says, comfort them, not condemn them. He says, comfort them, not castigate them. Comfort my people. Not criticize them. God says they have enough people condemning and criticizing and castigating them. God says uh, they have enough people doing that between society, Satan, and social media. They have enough discomfort, but I need you to bring some comfort to my people. And Brandon, as I was exegeting the text, I discovered that the word comfort in the text is plural denoting that not only was the prophet supposed to comfort God's people, but others were to comfort them too. The writer doesn't identify who the others are that, that, that are supposed to uh, comfort God's people. And so my brothers and sisters, I, I questioned God. I, I said there's no uh, identification of those others who were supposed to comfort along with the prophet and God said, Eric, the others are my people who are called by my name in every generation. The, the, the others are you. The others are Mount Moriah. The others are, are all my people everywhere. We are supposed to comfort one another. Oh, my brothers and sisters, so on your job, comfort one another. I'm sure you've got colleagues and co-workers uh, who have enough critics and complaints that they have to deal with. But since you are there, you can bring some comfort to God's people. And my brothers and sisters, we comfort folk by letting them know that there is a penalty for sin that has been paid for. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We, we comfort them with the gospel of Jesus Christ. We comfort them with the news of Advent. That's the hope of Advent, forgiveness, because that's why Jesus came into the world the first time. He came to live the life that you and I should have lived and died the death that we should have died. He came to forgive sin. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He says, comfort my people. Comfort them by telling them that while they were yet sinners, Christ died for them. Not after they earned it. Not after they warranted it. No, the hope of Advent includes forgiveness. And forgiveness is never deserved. No, my brothers and sisters, forgiveness is never earned. Forgiveness is given. It's a gift. My brothers and sisters, the hope of Advent includes the hope of forgiveness. Now, I think I need to tell you 
that we can't treat this forgiveness, this pardon. We, we can't treat it like Trump treats pardons. We, we can't think that we can do any and everything because we claim to be God's child. Because if we are truly God's child, then there's some things that we just can't do. If I love God, I can't mistreat my neighbor. If, if I love God, I can't mistreat my fellow man. So my brothers and sisters, don't think that you can call on the name of God and just live any old kind of way because the hope of Advent includes forgiveness. True forgiveness, my brothers and sisters, when you are truly forgiven, it's a clean slate and it makes you want to do better. Not to go out and fulfill the lust of the flesh. But my brothers and sisters, the, the hope of Advent includes the hope of forgiveness. But not only does the hope of Advent include the hope of forgiveness, secondly, the text teaches that the hope of Advent includes hope from the Father. Look at verses 3 and 4. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The even ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. In ancient times when a king got ready to travel, especially to a, another land, uh, there would be a, a, a company that would go before the king and prepare the way. Uh, they, they would excavate the land. They would uh, uh, knock down trees. They would make a path. So that the, the travel of the king wouldn't be impeded. That there would be no obstacles, nothing to, to stop the king on his journey. And my brothers and sisters, to, to, to clear the path, the writer is suggesting that the people of God can be uh, hopeful because God was on the way. Uh, he says, prepare away in the wilderness make straight make path and my brothers and sisters he was saying that no terrain no weather no threats or ex existential threats can stop the king of kings i don't care what it looks like in your life how impossible you think it is nothing is too hard for our god and my brothers and sisters the prophet wanted them to know and wants us to know that help is on the way now Isaiah isn't talking about a literal geographical or a typographical change but he's talking about the upheaval that true repentance brings he, he's talking about a new moral topography a new social landscape where all lives matter He's talking about depression being relieved and pride being flattened and confusion being corrected and emotions being balanced and mental illness being addressed. Every valley shall be lifted up. And if you're in life's valley during this Advent season, if you are in life's valley feeling like you're all alone and, and there's your, your hope is almost gone, my brothers and sisters, there's good news because every valley and every low place shall be lifted up. But that ain't all. There's more good news. And that is that every mountain and hill shall be made low. Those who are abusing power in the mountain of government and on, the, on Capitol Hill will be made low. If we do our part and get out and vote, then God will do his part by making sure that our voice and our votes are heard. Every bullet who bothers and badges you will be brought low. My brothers and sisters, the mountain of debt that you're in can be brought low. That mountain of sickness that you're dealing with can be brought low. And I don't know about you, but I'm glad that there's hope from the Father. And my brothers and sisters, hope from the Father means that ultimately everything is going to be on equal ground. Because the uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. In other words, fairness and equality of life can be a reality right here and now because of the first advent. And it will be a reality eternally after the second advent.
Advent. My brothers and sisters, we all know that life can sometimes be a bumpy road. But with God, it's always a joy ride. So hang on in there. Don't give up on God because God won't give up on you. And my brothers and sisters, the hope of Advent includes the hope of forgiveness. Includes the hope from the Father. But thirdly and finally, the hope of Advent includes hope for the future. Look at verse 5. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The hope of Advent contains the hope of forgiveness and hope from the Father. But it also contains hope for the future. That's the last thing I want to leave you with, my brothers and sisters. That is, you can have hope for tomorrow. My brothers and sisters, he says that the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all the people shall see it together. Isaiah seems to suggest that God had not abandoned his people and that God had not thrown them away. Isaiah seems to suggest that their best days were still ahead of them. And my brothers and sisters, that's what I want to encourage you with this morning, that our best days are still ahead of us. I don't care what you're experiencing in your life. I don't care how you feel about it. The good news is that hope, there's hope for tomorrow. My brothers and sisters, the hope for tomorrow is an existential hope, but it's also an eschatological hope. It's an existential hope, and that is hope for the here and now. My brothers and sisters, Jesus said that I came, my advent, I came to give you life and that life more abundantly. My brothers and sisters, Jesus was talking about life here and now, and then he was talking about life later. My brothers and sisters, we can have abundant life right now. But I think I need to tell you that abundant life does not consist in the abundance of things. My brothers and sisters, you can still have the abundant life this Christmas even if you don't get not one gift. My brothers and sisters, because God has a plan for your life. You've got a future because God said, I know the plans that I have for you, the plans to prosper you, the plans to give you a future, and that future with hope. My brothers and sisters, when he said this promise to his people, they didn't have any hope. And I'm talking to some folk. Your hope is about gone. You're hanging on by the hair of your chinny chin chin. But I stopped by to tell you that you can have hope for tomorrow because he lives. My brothers and sisters, that's the hope of Advent. The hope that he came, he lived, and he died. He died for our sins. My brothers and sisters, when he was born, they laid him in a manger. But when he died, they hung him on an old rugged cross. They hung him high. 
they stretched him wide. He hung his head, and for you and me, he died. That's love, but there's hope, my brothers and sisters, because that's not how the story ends. Because three days later, he rose again. That's love, and my brothers and sisters, the hope of Advent includes our forgiveness. The hope of Advent includes hope from the Father. The hope of Advent includes a hope for a future. Now I need to know, can you give God praise right where you are? Because you've got a future. Somebody needs to high five somebody. Type in the text, I've got a future. I don't care how you feel, you've got a future. If you got breath in your body, you've got a future. All you got to do is trust in the Lord. Give God some praise right where you are. If somebody can testify that you've got hope, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thank God. I thank God for my hope. I thank God that I can keep on running to see what the end's going to be. I may not have everything I think I want, my brothers and sisters, but I've got everything I need, and that's good news. I can shout right there, and you ought to be able to give God praise right where you are. You might not have everything you want, but if you're honest, you've got everything you need. Can you give God praise right there for the hope of Advent? I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for the hope, the hope of Advent, the hope of Advent, Jesus' first Advent over 2,000 years ago. And we're getting ready to celebrate and commemorate his second advent or second coming. The Apostle Paul said, quoting Jesus, Jesus said that as often as we partake in the Lord's Supper, that we do show the Lord's death and resurrection until he comes, until that second advent when the trump of God will sound and the voice of God will crack the sky. The dead in Christ shall be raised and those who remain shall be changed and caught up to meet him in the air. That's the hope of advent. My brothers and sisters, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, the good news is the hope of Advent because he came to give you right to the tree of life. He came to give you the abundant life that can only be found in him. And if you want that life, if you want the hope of Advent, it's as easy as A, B, C. A, admit that you are a sinner in need of a savior. Acknowledge that Jesus is the son of the living God who came and lived the life that we should have lived and died the death that we should have died and that God raised him from the dead. Then B, believe that he is who he says he is. And seek, confess that belief with your mouth. And the Bible declares that you will, you shall be saved. And if you made that declaration, that decree, would you come in in the chat? Would you type in the chat? Would you email us? Would you call us and let us know of your decision so we can celebrate with you? And as soon as it is safe to return in this sacred space, we'll be so happy and honored 
to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Can you give God praise right there, right where you are? Give God praise right, right where you are. The hope of Advent. And my brothers and sisters, we're getting ready to worship God through giving. And here at the Mount, we understand that God loves cheerful givers. So we are intentionally cheerful about giving to the ministry, to the work of the Lord. And we want to encourage you to be cheerful, a cheerful giver. And if the ministry has been a blessing to you, would you consider being a blessing to the ministry? Now, we're asking the members of the Mount to give an additional $50 Christmas gift to the Mount in addition to your tithes and your offerings. Someone said, well, pastor, what's, what's it for? Well, it's for the work of ministry. And so the $50 is just your Christmas gift to the church. You know, here we are celebrating the season of Christmas, the advent, the birth of Christ. And it's his birthday that we celebrate. But it's interesting that during the Christmas season, the birth, the time we celebrate the birth of Christ, it's interesting that historically, traditionally, statistically, this is the time that the church suffers the most from lack of giving. The malls and MasterCard and seems to get all of our, our resources. But let's flip the script this year. Let's make sure that we are sowing into the kingdom of God, that we, that we can give God, that we can give his church $50 to celebrate all that he gives and does for us every day of our lives. Amen. The ways to give are on your screen. Prayerfully you will be led to, to give to God a portion of that that he so richly blessed you with. And my brothers and sisters, we are getting ready to partake of the Lord's Supper because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow. And so we, in obedience, Participate. And on the night that which the Lord was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it. And after he blessed it, he broke it. And he told his disciples, he said, this is my body, which is broken and bruised for you. And as often as you eat it, you eat it in remembrance of me. Church of the Living God, let us all eat together. Likewise, when they had supped, he took the cup. He said, This is my blood, which is shed for you. As often as you drink it, you drink it in remembrance of me. Church of the Living God, let us all drink together. Now, when they finished, they went into a garden. We're not going into a garden. We're going into a mean, cruel world. But I want to encourage you to take the Lord with you everywhere you go. And remember the hope of Advent, the hope of forgiveness, the hope from the Father. You've, he's got a, a, a plan for your life and a hope for the future. Can you pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you, we praise you, we honor you for this worship experience. We thank you 
but what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have felt. Our strong God, we, we pray that you would make the hope of Advent real in our lives. That we can know that we are forgiven. You said if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive and cleanse us. So we thank you for the hope of forgiveness. We thank you for the hope from the Father. Thank you for the hope for the future. We thank you for the privilege to worship you through giving. We ask that you would bless both the gift and the giver, that both will be used for the furtherance and upbuilding of your kingdom. And we pray that no one who gave will suffer lack because of that gift, but we'll find your word to be true. When you promised that if we bring the tithes into the storehouse, that you would open up the wonders of heaven and pour out blessings that we would not have room enough to receive. Thank you for your word when you said, if we give, it shall be given unto us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto our. But when you said that you'd meet and supply our every need, according to your riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Our strong God, we, we thank you for how you take care of us. Thank you for taking care of the Fraley family. Thank you for the report that I got that Brother Fraley is out of ICU. That Sister Red Wine is getting ready for physical therapy and Sister Jordan is on her way home. Thank you for the hope of forgiveness. There are some things we are hoping for and our strong God, we thank you that we can have hope because of Advent. And now our strong God, we ask that you will continue to bless us and keep us. Continue to make your face to shine upon us. Continue to be gracious unto us. Continue to lift up your countenance upon us and grant us your peace. A peace that the world did not give and therefore the world can't take away. A peace that surpasses all understanding and a peace that will guard our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Now may trouble neglect us. May our neighbors respect us. May angels protect us. And when you call, may heaven accept us. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I love you. Have a wonderful week.